He was half punk rocker, half street fighter. His wild brawls quickly made him a fan favorite to the Staten Island boxing crowd. Armed with quick hands and power to spare, his manager likened his fighting style to hot peppers because he noticed that all of his opponents had a hard time handling him. John Verderosa grew up in the Stapleton neighborhood in Staten Island. His older brother Guy had won a city boxing championship in the Police Athletic League, and at the age of 11, John tagged along with him to the gym. Trainer Ray Rivera took the young man under his wing, and a career was born. Verderosa fought in the New York Golden Gloves from 1974 to 1976, posting a 9 in 1 record and winning the Open Class Championships at 118 and 126 pounds. His fondest memory was a night in 1975 when he and two of his stablemates, Kevin Rooney and Al Tobe, won the Golden Gloves titles in their respective divisions. They were known as the Stapleton Sneaker Brigade because none of them could afford boxing shoes. Verderosa represented the USA for meets in South America, but had his hopes dashed for a spot on the Olympic team after a loss to Davy Lee Armstrong. Verderosa tried his hand at other sports, winning trophies in baseball at the Stapleton AC. As a student at Curtis High School in Staten Island, he sang in the chorus, played baseball, and tried his hand at football until an injury curtailed his efforts. He was just too small for that, his mother said. The now 5'5", 135-pounder turned professional in June of 1979 under the management of Frank Schiaka, whose wife, Nancy, was also the promoter. Verderosa was now trained by Chango Diaz, who only spoke Spanish. Somehow they communicate, Shaka explained. His manager set a busy schedule, sometimes with only days between fights. In June of 1980, in a bout that should have been billed as the Battle of the Vampires, Verderosa was knocked down by club fighter Jorge Nina. He became so enraged that he ran across the ring and bit Nina in the neck. His opponent then retaliated by biting him in the left shoulder. Nina was then disqualified in the sixth round after kneeing Verderosa in the groin. Nina's bite left a three-stitch scar on Verderosa's shoulder and he had to get a tetanus shot. Verderosa then stopped the undefeated Louis Hobella in seven rounds before getting a crack at the USBA junior lightweight title against the undefeated Robert Mullins. Robert Mullins can take advantage. What we know about Mullins is that he's a crafty boxer and he can rumble. Mullins in the maroon and gray, Verderosa in the red and white, and they are getting down immediately. Well, Verderosa, for being a slow starter, sure picked up the beginning of this round. Got off some good punches. Mullins countered, doing a very good job. And down goes Mullins, a right hand, seconds into the opening round. The count is six, seven. is Johnny the Heat Verderosa. With the win, Verderosa ran his record to 20-0 with 14 knockouts. Ring Magazine called him the best young Italian-American fighter since Willie Pep. He was now ranked third by the World Boxing Association and wanted his shot at the sanctioning body's champion, Sammy Serrano. When somebody's not as strong as me, Verderosa said, I give him no respect. They can hit me five, six times. I don't even feel it. But his discipline wasn't the greatest, and he had a reputation for indulging in a wild, partying lifestyle. I wasn't going to the gym, Verderosa said. 
I lost my inspiration, my discipline. I just lost interest. You have to go to the gym and work. I got sidetracked with things, personal things. His management team tried to keep him busy as he got another televised date, this go around against the experienced Nicky Perez, who had faced Micah Yala, Wilfredo Gomez, and Salvador Sanchez. I've seen Verderosa before. He's torrid. That's why they call him the Heat. Sal, 24 years ago in New York City, there was a UFO sighting. And to this day, I'm not sure that it wasn't the infant John Verderosa on that spaceship. <laughs> He's got a lot of confidence. He is a cocky young man. He believes he will be the world champion in due time of this world. Of this and every other world, the way he comes. <laughs> I am not sure that he was born on this planet. And now the crowd picking up the chant, heat, heat, let's listen. Left hook by Verderosa. Fallen sure remembers. Verderosa checking out his right hand, and he gets tagged by two right hands from Perez. What happened there? Did Verderosa hurt his right hand? Could have. He could have broken his right hand. He landed a right hand. I think it might have been on the shoulder, and he stepped back and looked at it. Less than 30 seconds to go in the round. And the plot is really thickening here. Werner Rosa, the USBA junior lightweight champion, is taking hard shots from Nico Perez. And there's a question mark about his right hand. We'll check it out between rounds. Nico Perez takes a right hand from Werner Rosa. So maybe that right hand is okay. We'll be right back. Another heavy jab by Werner Rosa. As a matter of fact, last July 11th, Nicky Perez was in there with Salvador Sanchez, the world's featherweight champion, who stopped Gomez and Wilfredo Gomez in August. And Nicky Perez lost a close 10-round decision. So this guy is no turkey. Werner Rosa in this round has found his tempo. He just scored with a heavy left hook. He's also banging the body of Perez. And he also went southpaw for a moment. Face of Werner Rosa. Verderosa's uh, left eye is now discolored. Verderosa is getting hit more this fight than any fight I think I've ever seen him fight in. Overhand right and left hook and the heat swings out with a combination against Nico Perez. Well, Nico just showed you he's got a good chin. That left to the body by Verderosa did some damage. You can see Perez punch over in pain. Right uppercut by Perez, but he pays the price as Werner Rosa tags. Now they're both settling down and it's turning into a chess match. They are boxing magnificently. <laughs> Left right combination of that right hand hurt Perez. Werner Rosa went to the body after that left right combination. And Perez digs in and shoots a right hand and catches Verderosa. Just when Verderosa was thinking to himself, aha, now I got the guy hurt, Perez comes back and Perez just took a low left hook. A couple of right hands. One by Perez and one by Verderosa. And Johnny the Heat comes up from the hip with a left. And Sal, after the seventh round, referee Larry Hazard went over to the Heat's corner and said, if you land another low punch, I'm going to have to take a point away from you. The Heat, as we pointed out earlier, has landed five low punches this fight. Verderosa tagged Perez with a right hand a few seconds ago, just did it again, scores with another right hand. And the heat is going for broke here. The heat spit out his mouthpiece. He was the land, one that landed a very hard right hand, and yet he spit out the mouthpiece. Verderosa with a chopping right hand, a left hook. Perez taking a heavy punishment here in this round. And again, heat landed a low punch, and I'm not sure Hazard saw that one. Another low blow out of the view of Larry Hazard. So Verderosa with a brawling style here. Takes a right hand from Perez. Verderosa standing there like a punching bag. And he throws a right hand behind the neck of Perez. And Larry Hazard has informed the officials at ringside that he's taking away a point. That was no question about it. That the Heat purposely threw a punch behind the neck of Perez. Yes, I think on, on the planet that the Heat comes from, you're allowed to do that. But you can't on Earth. Meanwhile, Nico Perez, right? Another sharp punch by Verderosa. Verderosa looking to clean up. It's Perez with a right hand. This has not been the cleanest.
this fight in the world, especially on the part of Verderosa. Left hand by Verderosa. The Heat really scorching Nico Perez here in round number eight, but they had a point taken away from him. In the last two rounds, Verderosa spit out his mouthpiece. And look at him taking a pounding from Perez. He is so cocky, he believes he can do that and yet come back and win the round. Nick Perez just stepped back after he hit Verderosa with those shots and he said to himself, oh my God, what do I have to do to take this guy out? And Perez just took a heavy right hand rolling halfway through the round. Verderosa is connecting heavily. He has a fine chin. Last September 25th, in Madison Square Garden, he fought a guy by the name of Roman Contreras. In the ninth round, Contreras had the heat out on his feet in the ninth round, and the heat just stood there and let the guy wail away at his chin. He staggered back to his corner, yet the guy could not drop him. Raleigh's so confident, he feels that it doesn't matter how many times he gets hit, he has a fierce, fierce will as Johnny the Heat Murderosa. That's why he is so exciting in the ring. I think the Heat is setting a Guinness World Book of Records tonight, getting hit with right uppercuts and staying on his feet. Another right hand by Murderosa that just flipped Perez on the face. That right hand got him full. That's the best punch of the fight. Murderosa tagged Perez with a right hand. Another right hand, and Perez goes down on a delayed reaction. Two big right hands in succession. Plenty of time in the round as Larry Hazard counts the full eight. Perez was up at five, and Perez has to kill time here until the bell. Rosa with another right hand. Down goes Perez for the second time in the round. He's up quickly at four. He gets the full eight count from Larry Hazard. USBA Junior Lightweight Championship. Perez trying to shake the cobwebs out of his head. He was down twice in the previous round. And Bruno Rosa throws another right hand. Down goes Perez for the third time. Gets up quickly. Larry has it in his face with the eight count. Plenty of time here in round 10 for Bruno Rosa. Perez has both eyes now swollen and Larry has it stops the fight. John Verderosa has scored a technical knockout over Nico Perez in the 10th round. With the exposure, Verderosa's name came up in talks with high-profile fighters. Even lightweight champion Alexis Arguello was discussed as a possible opponent. But first, there was another test to pass in the experienced Julio Valdez. I've seen Johnny Verderosa before. Have you ever seen a fighter with this kind of a style? That's what makes him interesting. The opponents don't know what angle he's coming from. I don't believe he knows either. Just missed for that one. You just caught a piece of Valdez. Valdez is not getting too much body in his punches. He's punching with his arms only. That's the end of the round. Verderosa in his corner. We're in round five. And Verderosa open up, opens up right away. When Verderosa is going to try that right hand, he just puts a left foot forward and here it comes. A series of punches down by Verderosa. Dear Quinto's in trouble. Valdez is in trouble. Look at the way he's trying to tie up Verderosa. And Verderosa wants to put him away. Valdez has got plenty of problems, and Verderosa is all over him. He's landing with every one of those punches. The Aplico is trying to get something going, can't do it. 
Do you think or can't get on? He's fighting back as much as he can, but he was hurt earlier in the round. We're in the fifth round. There's a long way to go, and at this pace, I don't see how it could go all the way. Neil Blito retreating now, just taking punishment. Just catching punches to the head, and plenty of them. Another one. And that right hand of Bertoros is coming all the way from center field, and it's catching Neil Blito almost every time. From side to side. He is not trying to get out of the way of that right hand. He wants to trade punches with him. He's too weak to do that. He hasn't got the power to match for the wrestler right now. Fredo Rosa could make a mistake and he could get caught. I don't know how much power Valdez has left. But Fredo Rosa could be gambling, could be getting very careless, and he could get caught with a punch. As I say, I don't know how much power Valdez has left, whether he could do anything with it or not. Diablito Valdez fighting an uphill fight. Pace has slowed down. It had to slow down. They couldn't keep that pace that they started early in the fight. Those first four or five rounds, that was really something. It's still a good fight, but the pace has slowed down somewhat. A right hand. A long right hand. Diablito's up. It's seven, eight, and go ahead, McCarthy says. The fleet goes shaky. Berta Ross is all over. He's on top of him. And he's nailing him with both hands to the head. The Aplico trying to run for cover. He was hurt by that right hand, a long right hand, right on the point of the chin. Valdez went down. I don't think he could survive any more right hands like that one that knocked him down, however. And Bernard Rush is about to lose that mouthpiece again. And he got uh, right into the jaw because he was trying to keep the mouthpiece in his mouth. He almost tells you what he's going to do. And Valdez almost lost his mouthpiece and he took a right hand as he stuffed it back into his mouth. to Bertorosa's body a little bit, and it's bothering Bertorosa because he's wincing. And there it goes again, the chant, heat. Valdez has to pull off some sort of a miracle now. Ah, it's too late for that, it's too late for a miracle. Judge Charles Spina scoring it. Six rounds, Verderosa. Four rounds, Valdez. Two rounds, even. Points. Verderosa wins it. 53 Valdez. I'll give you the scoring by rounds again. A split decision and still. Judge Charlie Spina had it six rounds for each fighter. Johnny the Heat Verderosa. Arthur McCanty scored the fight in favor of Valdez, 7-4. And Eva Shane had Bertarossa ahead, six rounds to four. So it's a split decision, and Johnny Bertarossa retains his title. Six weeks after the victory, Bertarossa was placed in against Cornelius Boza Edwards. I don't respect him, Bertarossa said, but he's a hard puncher, so I've got to make sure I don't get clipped clean. In the pros, one or two times, I maybe started praying while I fought. In this one, I figure I'll probably have to gut it up. Boza was a former champion, but now seen as a stepping stone for the undefeated Verderosa. If Verderosa won, a title shot was assured, but the reports of partying now became more frequent. Johnny's a funny kid to handle, manager Shiaka said. He's moody. It's like the weather. I like to go out and party, sure, Verderosa said. I'm an extremist. When I train, I train real hard. When I party, 
I party hard. A couple of times, maybe I wasn't disciplined enough, but mainly I like to kick back, like they say in California, as far as I can kick. The partying and lack of discipline affected his finances as well. Verderosa had spent all of his ring earnings. I blew it, Verderosa said. I had it all planned, what I wanted to do, but I blew it. It's not funny, but all I can do now is laugh. Verderosa also now had trouble making the weight. He was now the number two ranked contender with the title shot waiting, and all he had to do was get past Cornelius Boza Edwards. 31, 3 and 0, the record for Boza Edwards, 25 knockouts, Verderosa 22 and 0, unbeaten with 15 KOs. From Staten Island, New York, he has been Mr. Excitement, fighting primarily in the state of New York and a few times here in the state of New Jersey. Big right hand landed in the ear of Boza Edwards, and the heat opening with plenty of heat. When you watch Johnny Verdoso, you just don't know what he's going to do. He's got a very, very unorthodox style, but he's very supple. He's a, he's a good athlete, and he, he just does all sorts of things. Very, very hard to figure out. Jose Edwards, the new European champion, ranked number two by the World Boxing Council. Verdoso, the USDA champion, ranked number six by the WBC. Quite a matchup. Watching Verdoso in the gym, we saw some of his uh, outstanding athletic ability. That exercise with a heavy bag where he ducks under the bag, which uh, would be about a foot and a half off the ground pretty impressive exercise well tim at his size five foot five he was a quarterback on curtis high school's football team under a minute to go round one the heat for many of his fans coming down from staten island to support him here today Cornelius goes edwards his wife ramico at ringside and his stepfather jack edwards from whom he got the second half of his name he was cornelius boza in uganda rock to go first round Looking to that left, and Verderosa looking with a wild right. What a finish for round one. They're toe to toe in the middle of the ring. Number two of a scheduled 10 rounder at 130 pounds. Johnny Verderosa on the right of your screen. He is the USBA junior lightweight champion. Rosa Edwards on the right of your screen now, the former WBC Super Featherweight Champion, and those weights are the same. WBC calls it Super Featherweight, and the calls it Junior Lightweight. All the same, 130 pounds. Alvarete would like to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but get the deputy manager says he's now a little more defense-oriented, and he'll need to be against Puerto Rosa. You don't know where to put your defense against Puerto Rosa. You don't know whether you're fighting a south core or north core or what. come from all over. That came off a solid straight left hand from Boza Edwards right to the mush, but Verderosa was throwing punches right off the scoring blow from Boza Edwards. It's, it's Edwards' steadiness against the explosiveness of Verderosa. Verderosa lands a right hand. Tim Verderosa's style makes him expend a lot of energy, too. I don't know how good his stamina is if the fight goes into the right hand. 15 knockouts in 22 fights, so he hasn't had to go the distance very often. Did go 12 in his last outing, got, uh, finally winning a decision, split decision over Julio Diablica Valdez. Under a minute to go, round two. Long left hand landed for Boza Edwards. Landed a good body blow, Verderosa just frowned at him and came back with a combination. Right hand scored by Boza Edwards. The thing is, Edwards is not getting flustered by this unusual style of Verderosa. He's staying right there and throwing a pop of punches. In the second round, under 30 seconds to go, and it has been non-stop. Verderosa coming out with the heat. That's his nickname. He gave it to himself. Now, he, now he's the club fighting Verderosa. They must have told him to stay right on top of Boza Edwards because that's what he's done from the opening bell. He's right there now, Tim. He is trained by Chango Diaz from Cuba. The manager is Frank Chaka. Oh, a good left hand by Verderosa. They just clashed that stuff. He's staying right in there. He's keeping his forehead right on Boza Edwards' chest. But what a pace. An unbelievable pace. For round three, a good combination. Go 
toe-to-toe -to against the likes of Suzuka Limon and Bobby Chacon. What about with Alexis Aguayo? He can get into these and stand there and bang with anybody. But of course, he was stopped in a fight like this by Rolando Navarrete and lost his world title. Werner Rosa just landed another combination before the break. Good right hand for both Edwards. Edwards is doing things much more correctly than Werner Rosa. He's throwing short punches, proper punches. He got him hurt. It was a left hand. Werner Rocha, and he walks into another left hand. Jose Edwards, this one down. Really, Werner Rocha. Battery from Jose Edwards here in the third round. And he is up with the count. Larry Hazard, the referee, looks him in the eye, says he's all right. A, a big left hand by Jose Edwards. Werner Rocha takes him off. That is a punishment. Left hand taken into the ropes again. And that's it. It's all over. Cornelius Jose Edwards with a third round knockout of unbeaten Johnny Verderosa. I'm very sorry for my performance, Verderosa said. I'm very sorry for the outcome. Taking a break from his rigorous fight schedule, Verderosa took off over 10 months before returning to the sport. He began his comeback at a higher weight class, the junior welterweight division. The Heat said he was ready to reignite, and he got another televised date. This go-around against another former champion, Sean O'Grady. Verderosa saw O'Grady in the hotel room the day before the fight and said hello. O'Grady gave him the cold shoulder. Verderosa felt he was being disrespected and came into the ring the next day in a rage. And after I beat O'Grady, which I am, I'm gonna may, maybe I can make my team's division, uh, you know, lightweight division with a lot of effort. How do you see the O'Grady fight? Do you see that as a toe-to-toe, -to -toe, gutted out fight? Well. He's not going to try to outbox me and move around a lot. He's not, he's not such a good fighter backing up. And uh, he has a lot of guts in his head and not too much in his heart. And I'm going to be really, 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 really ready and, and put a lot of pressure on him. I'm going to bring the dog out of him. The Sean Superior ring general ship in his first round. by Verderosa. Sean just cannot go back right. Good exchanges by both fighters. They're just taking turns. Where Sean uses ring generalship to win the first round, Verderosa has started and won the WBA lightweight championship. Action heating up this round. They're just trading heavy punishment. A good exchange. The Heat beginning to find the range with some heavy shots, forcing uh, Sean to go back. He cannot go back as well as he used to, and that may be to John the Heat for advantage. Good action here of the second round. Boy, Sean can punch from all angles. 85 rounds of experience packed into that little frame of Sean O'Grady's and he can really box when he wants to. O'Grady has to go from all angles to get the five foot five. John Pernarosa. do it for round two. Round three scheduled for ten. Brady continues to land on Verderosa. And with more effective punches as this bout progresses. Oh, stunned by that left hook. Sean is landing bullets back in 1981. Has been relatively inactive since he was stopped by Cornelius Jose Edwards back in April of 82. And then Arosa did land, and then O'Grady able to get out of the way. But here's Verderosa who hurt O'Grady. O'Grady is.
is hurt. As long as he's backing up, he's vulnerable. And a portion of the crowd to heat up. Uppercut by Barbarossa. He has a really in trouble here in this fourth round. Oh, left hand and right and then ready. Try to counter. And down he goes. O'Grady oh, looking at his corner, his worried father telling him to take the count. But no question about it, Verderosa on his mark, ready to come forward. The referee, Nate Morgan, waves him on. This following the impressive third round by O'Grady, and he is in big trouble. O'Grady's eyes are getting very, very blank. Just over a minute left in this fourth round. If Verderosa had anything left, he could put away O'Grady right now. The Heat's winning streak was short-lived. The undefeated Reyes Cruz outpointed him over 10 rounds, having him in serious trouble twice. Now back into rebuilding mode, he decisioned club fighter Carlos Amaya before taking on Kel Robin in another televised encounter. Throughout, but a constant barrage of rights like he throws might build up to it. Like that. Yes. Thunderous right by Kel Robin. And he's listening to his corner because Robin is throwing those punches with power now. He's close. Six inches, six inch punches. Look at that. This left hook to Kel, but it didn't bother Kel. What a right uppercut that was by Kel. And oh, right cross. a solid right cross by Robin. That had to rock Federosa. That was the most stunning punch of the fight. Federosa is hurt. He's holding. He's done. not done that all night. He's holding now because he's hurt. And he should be hurt with those kind of punches. Robin is winding up. There's a flick of the left jab. Now Vettorosa doing a little dancing to show that he's all right, but you have to wonder. Well, Vettorosa now should go out to the outside and take a little rest and recoup and then come back. But no, he wants to come right back at Kel Robin. That by far the most devastating punch of the fight here in round nine, midway through. What was All that? Right. Now, well, now, Vettorosa pretended he was hurt. He did that as a come on. He went down. He did a, de a half deep knee bend. But I'll tell you, he's. Kel can probably knock him out. He's got to keep up that action. And he certainly has watered down the heat. And this is it. Here's he the hurt. Combination. He's going to go down. He's going to be stopped. It is over. That was a terrific stoppage. That was the time to stop the fight because he would have been heard if that continued. The fight would be the last time Verderosa stepped into the ring. Online rumors suggest that he went into the army to try and get clean from his partying lifestyle. He eventually cleaned up, married a longtime girlfriend, and worked in construction. In 2022, he was inducted into the New York State Boxing Hall of Fame.